Hi guys, Dave here for Dave Outdoors. This video is one in a series on budget bushcraft and budget survival items. If you have any ideas or comments or any experiences, please share them down below in the comments section so that we can all read and learn from them. Thanks for tuning in. One thing I'd like to briefly touch on is just a follow up to my clothing video. I talked about this particular sweater here. Uh, it's merino, picked it up for 10 bucks from an op shop. And if you remember, well ventilated, everything as well if you remember correctly. Well, I picked up another one as well, this red one underneath it. And again, this was 10 bucks, 100% merino. Uh, this one is actually size small. I take a medium to a large, but I looked at this one, tried it on, and it fit really well. So now I've got a nice uh, body hugging base layer, and which gives me two layers of merino. So that for 20 bucks, plus the coat which I have over the top of it, which was about $20, I think it was. So that's like $40, and I got three layers of wool clothing, two merino and one wool. So again, you know, budget bushcraft, budget survival, keep checking out and keep looking uh, into the sales and wherever you can find the good gear and just keep upgrading your kit. Carrying items. Let's look at haversacks. I apologize for the noise that's going on around me. I just want to get these last videos out so that I can complete the series. And so, and just because of the circumstances, I'm having to do this at home. So, uh, we live close to an airfield. There's planes flying overhead. There's a house being built. They're all pretty happy over there. They're all singing. And so, <laughs> there was a bit of a wind going before, and uh, that might be affecting the noise. So, hopefully, that stopped. So, it's all on today. It's a very exciting place to live. But haversacks. Yeah, I really love haversacks. The just the versatility of them. I'm going out for a day. I don't necessarily need to take a backpack with me. I just prefer having something strapped right across me and haversacks come cover that. Even if I'm going out for a few days, I still have a haversack on and then a backpack over the top of that uh, because when I drop my pack at my camp, I've got my haversack with all my extra gear in that I like to carry. And for me, the haversack does carry the extra gear. I carry my 10 C's just on my belt and in my pockets. Um, that way if I go down and I lose my bags or anything like that, I've still got my stuff that I need to survive in my pockets and on my belt. The haversack just carries a bit of backup gear, a bit of redundancies, you know, some extra stuff. Um, so I've got two or three items of one and it also carries just the extra stuff I like. There's two in particular I like to look at here. Again, I'm a military surplus type guy, so that's what we got. I did a video on this guy here. This is the uh, British large pack from around about the World War II era and its design goes right back to pre-World War One. This doubles up as a backpack because you've got the straps here that are removable and it comes when you get an army surplus in New Zealand anyway with this webbing strap from the British 1937 webbing series and not really designed for this, but it does fit. It was designed for a slightly different purpose, but it fits in here into those buckles. And what you end up with is a haversack. So it doubles as a backpack, if you can get those straps, a little bit hard to get hold of, and it comes out as a haversack. The trouble with this, I would say, is a haversack is its size. As you can see, it's very large. But if that's not a problem for you, or you're a big fella, then you can carry a lot of stuff in that. It's actually really good. Very robust. So these are from the 1940s and even earlier, and they're still going. I gave this one a wash, and she's fine. It's been re -sewn in some places, and it's rock solid. It's got like decades of life left in it. So very good buy, and you get two items in one. You get a backpack and a haversack. You just adjust it for what you need. It's not ideal for both, but it's suitable for both. So it's a trade-off. These are around about 50 bucks, I think. Plus whatever the backpack straps cost. So not a bad item. The British large backpack, around about World War II era. And the other one I like to look at, oh. let me get one in here. I do have one in here I wanted to show you.
before I get to this guy, let's look at this. This is the Polish, I think it's, yeah, East German, I think it's, po or East European, I think it's Polish uh, bread bag. Really cool. Lots of good features. Got a carry handle there. Pretty robust cotton canvas on that as well. And looks like it might have some water repellency. I haven't really taken it out in the bush. I just use this as a hold all inside my cupboard. And it's like a waxed sort of fabric on that. I don't think it came with a strap, but you can easily hook one in there, maybe a rifle sling or something like that, or even a shemag, and you can make a strap and hang it over you. It's uh, pretty good. These were only like 20 bucks, maybe 15 bucks, I think. But I picked that up because it was just good value for money, had little pockets inside, and um, I'm looking at redoing, making my own sort of haversack, and this gave me some good ideas. Quick release. Very common, that kind of release on the old military stuff. Um, you don't see it so much now, but that was very common in um, Vietnam area, things like that. Uh, this sort of release, very quick release. As you can see, I keep my spare camera gear in there. So quite a bit of space, a couple of pouches. Got a separation in there, which I quite like. And she just clips on like that. So 20 bucks, that's a really good deal. And when you have the strap on it, it sits right up against your body like that, and it's rounded, which means it's gonna get through the bush nice and easy. Rather than get caught up like a square-shaped item was, things will tend to roll over it. Uh, trees, branches, things that will get caught up tend to just roll over it because it's got a nice shape. And just where the strap sits, she hugs you nice. So that's the Polish bread bag. I think it's Polish bread bag. Really good one. The item I think, which is an awesome item, these are about 20, 20 to 30 bucks. You get different qualities. Uh, you spend up to 30 bucks, so I think you get one that's brand new, I think. So a good price. This is the New Zealand Army gas mask bag. And it's a copy of the British Army gas mask bag. This is my day bag. When I go out and do my job, this has got all my stuff in it. I've got it loaded up with what I normally carry. And it comes with a strap and a quick release buckle there. So it's pretty good, pretty nicely done. I think this is new or very close to new. It's in excellent condition. So that's the strap there. The very close woven DPM camouflage um, fabric. I'd say it's probably got some water repellency on it, but not much. And it's all synthetic, doesn't look like it's cotton. Pretty sure it's like a nylon or something like that. And really good sewing, very robust. Okay. And it's got a little pouch here. This one still has a string in it. I think that just goes around your waist just to hold it, stop it from moving around. But real secure lid on it. And the lid doesn't just sit on top, it actually comes down the sides. So really good. Um, Shedding, really good for shedding rain, really good. There's a snap that holds it, and then it's Velcro. I'll give you a close-up of these. Holds a lot of stuff. Pretty cool. I've got a water bottle in there, what's that, about 300 mil? Yeah, something like 300 mil water bottle. That can hold um, 750 mil water bottle, no problem. And it's actually got a couple of sleeves in there that you could slip your water bottles into and slip other things into. So it's got a pouch in there which I keep all my uh, few meds and stuff like that, some lip balm, and that's got a Velcro closure. So it holds everything in nice and tight. On the sleeve on one side I've got my water bottle, sleeve on the other side I've got some of my 10C stuff, keep a book in there for reading, survival blanket, and I've got a small uh, utility knife as well, a multi-tool. And then, in the lid, a couple of elastic straps as well. A couple of elastic straps in the lid, hopefully you can see that. And I keep a cotton bandana and a beanie in there. Then, yeah, and she, again, she just closes nicely with Velcro and snaps close. Really, really cool. And there's a side pouch there with Velcro. I'll probably end up getting a snap put on that, something a bit more secure. Because uh, at work, when I get changed, 
I just dump my car keys straight into the side there and easy to get to uh, when I'm ready to go home. So pretty cool, pretty cool. Very robust, really solid. I think yeah, 25 bucks, 20, 20 to 30 bucks for something that looks like it's brand new. Pretty cool. And you get the British ones, um, the new British ones, they're really good. They got pouches attached on the side as well. A couple of different styles out there. Uh, this is the basic one, really good. Yeah, so haversacks and backpacks and even bedrolls. I tend to go for me, military. I tend to go military surplus. I think, as I said before, I think they just go the distance. I think they'll handle a lot more punishment than the civilian ones. The civilian ones, again, being very tough, but I just don't think they're built for the kind of punishment that the military throws at their stuff. So I go military every time. So have a sacks and backpacks. Thanks for watching, guys.